Welcome everybody to the Monday, March 20th meeting of the Conway Select Board, which may or may not become at 6.30 a joint meeting of the Select Board of the Finance Committee. Um, call the meeting to order. The first item is approving the minutes of March 13th, 2023. I thought actually it was a difficult meeting to do the minutes for. I thought they were particularly well done. They were particularly well done. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we got a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. There are no warrants tonight. Meetings attended by select board members. Chris? Uh, I was at the uh, school budget meeting with you. I had seriously I had like seven straight days of like nothing but meetings. It was just a blur of one continuous meeting. Um, yeah. And snowstorm. And snowstorm. And yeah, that was pretty much not not my favorite week. Pretty much really. Um, public comments. Thank you. Got anything? Got any? Yeah. Public wise? So, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it is public wise. All right. Um, Now's the time. I, I just want to express an interest in the piece of property that I think the now is owned by the town. Ah. On top of a hill that's right beside me. All right. Um, I've had an interest in it for 50 years, basically. That's so happens that that's on the agenda. Sure. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm here. Ah. <laughs> um, well. Um, do you want me we, to? Do you want me to sort of introduce the subject? Sure. I was I was going to appoint Lori first, okay. but, but we can make Lori to stay for the duration too. I don't mind. <laughs> okay. I'm learning. All right. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. So um, this piece of land is called the land of low value. It's about seven acres, and it's worth uh, three thousand three hundred dollars, or assessed at three thousand three hundred. So we went through a um, a process to acquire the deed. We went to auction twice and nobody showed. And after that happens, the town can take title. So um, our textile attorney has prepared a deed for you to sign tonight. And once that's filed with the registry, it's ours. And then we can decide if we want to sell it or not. And I would assume we would. Um, but that's up to you. And Hank is interested in purchasing it. But that price, of course, would have to be negotiable. So I can tell you the tax amount due. Um, but of course, we don't have to sell it for the tax amount due, but I did have to auction it for the tax amount due. So that amount is uh, $19,694.29 as of today. And there's $1,184 in legal fees. So uh, that totals $20,878.29. Obviously not the, worth the anywhere lands, near that. The lands of low value really are lands yeah, of low so, value. Well, this one has been in non-payment since 1995. Wow. It was a very big process to um, get it to this point. It took a lot of work. We had the wrong owner assess. We had to reissue the bills, reassess, redo everything. So um, it was a lot of work to get it to this point. So hopefully and we so can I, move it on and put it back on the tax roll. And I know um, when it says zero Ashfield Road, that that's sort of, there's a lot of properties that are zero Ashfield Road. Yeah, so it's so, actually zero off Ashfield Road, which means it's landlocked. Has no road frontage, and that's what makes it of no value. So um, the deed actually gets signed by me, but I didn't want to do that without your vote and approval to sign it. And Lori's here to notarize it. All right. So is now is now a good time to make a motion to authorize the signing of it. 
you you okay. came. The signing of it includes what the sale price as well. No, no. no. So this deed just makes the town own it. Oh, okay. It's the final step to complete right. our ownership. Right. Okay. And then you know going forward, you'll decide what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um. I'll make a motion to sign a deed for the property listed as zero on Ash Road. And I'll still make a motion to have Jan Warner sign a deed. Jan Warner. <laughs> yes. Thank you. On behalf of the town of Cone. Uh, and I'll second that. And all in favor. Aye. aye. That's an aye for me, too. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> so that's unanimous and very good. Thank you. And we know we know when it was at auction, you did not bid on it when it was at the full twenty thousand dollar price. That's correct. That's correct. So we know that if the town were to say that that's the sales price, that that is still likely to not have a buyer. Then in that case. I don't want to speak on Hank's behalf. He's well, it can, if otherwise, Hank could have bought it at that price already. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have so we'll have to figure out a sales price between that number and zero. Um, that would be calculated to entice Hank to buy it. Uh, well, I would. I uh, hope you don't sell it for less than the legal. Fees That's what I'm going to say. Legal yes. fees need to be paid. Hopefully. Yeah. Thank you. yeah, that's true. That's true. <clears throat> that is a definite floor. Um, what was that again? What did I say? Eleven eighty-four. Yeah. Eleven eighty-four. Eleven one thousand one hundred and eighty-four are what the town's legal fees are. And then there's going to be a recording fee for the deed. Yes. That's $155. 125. How do you get less than that? The town must get a discount. That's what my attorney told me. For me, it's 100. I just had to pay a recording fee. It's 155. This, this is a treasury deed. deed. Yeah. Uh, they don't like you, probably. I think, I think you got that right. All right. All right. Um, what else do we have to do with this property? That's it. That's it. And when do we decide what the sale price is going to be? That's you. Who decides that? Just the select board? Just the board. Now's the first thing. That's up to you. You'll need, to, you'll need to have Veronique and your legal assistant help you through that process. What, what I'm, I'm basically handing it to you now. What additional information do we need or would be helpful to set the sales price? Well, well so we did. I mean, he's here. And like, if it's, if we have everything, we can just say what it is right now, right? No. <laughs> Bad idea? Yeah. I was going to say, you probably I, I want think to you can it. usually go Make into executive notice. session yeah. to, um, well, well, yeah, yeah you what kind of price you want. No question about that. Yeah. I think yeah. you're just saying you could set the fee tonight. The yeah. sales price, which is different than putting it up. Wouldn't you want to go into executive sessions? I would think so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would think yeah. that would be a real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's one of the reasons you can go into executive session. Yeah. I would certainly recommend it. Since this is a landlocked property, Hank, did, is there a right of way on your property to get to this parcel? I have bought it. You bought it, okay. Mm -hmm. But if I were to kind of call, there is no right of way to access that property from anywhere. Uh, okay. It was part of a property that's in Nashville. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. So. One side of it, I think, is yeah, it's a good line. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go into executive session next week. And then how long does it take to get the deed? Recorded and uh, well, I just need to get money from the next warrant, so maybe you should put it the one after. All right, and the deed will be once I have the check, I'll send it right in and it'll be filed within the week. All right, 
So that's two weeks from tonight. We're going to deal with this again. Deal with the executive session. In the meantime, thank you. And once, once I, I would think, once you come out of that executive session, Hank could come back in and you can negotiate the price if you plan on selling. Yeah. That's so good. And, and this would be in two weeks? Two weeks from tonight. And your lawyer would have to draw up the paperwork to sign over the deed. Okay. Yes, so that would be the piece. Yeah, well, <laughs> true. All right, all right. We're on the next thing then? Yes. Okay, so that's it. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. right. Be here again at the same time? Yep. Okay, yep. thank you. you. Thanks, thanks, thank you. And appointment of Lori Hall as assistant treasurer collector. So I would like to introduce Lori Hall. She comes from <laughs> Turner's Falls and she comes with 11 years experience in a small company called Detective Garden out of Greenfield. She has um, some accounting and accounts payable, receivable and payroll experience. So we were very happy to meet her, and I would like to, with your approval, offer her the position. So if you have any questions for Lori, now would be the time. <laughs> my, my question's very odd. Detecto Guard is such a weird name. What did Detecto yeah. Guard do? It was a mouthful. <laughs> Um, so they installed and um, service security alarm systems. Okay. Fire alarm, security alarm, access control systems. So, uh, my question is always the same. Is you do want this job? <laughs> yes, I'm <Okay>. excited. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. It's not much of a commute. Turner's balls, so that's good. No, it actually took yeah. me 23 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Good. Good and uh, okay, um, I would, I would uh, and this is no, there's no date, there's no date, there's no date, it's just an open appointment. Yes, and it's actually under Jan's purview to make the appointment with select board approval. Yes, for sure, quite. All right, so I move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Very strong, very vigorous eye. Very good, very good. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yes, congratulations and welcome. And um, if you ever have any comments or concerns, I'm <laughs> probably the last person you really do what we can. Welcome. Thank you for wine. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Bob Armstrong, upcoming aggregation negotiation and appointment of delegate. And here's where I say, Bob, I've learned my lesson, uh, and, and I'll be quiet. No, no, no. Uh, really, I'm really. I I once opposed the con this concept, and I have to say, history has proven my concerns. Uh, not terribly well placed. Um, in, in fact, this, is a, this, this has proved to be a popular program in town and a good program. And uh, thanks to your work and your shepherding of it from birth to where we're at now. Uh, it's only popular because it's saving people a lot of money. <laughs> like, is that that's important. <laughs> that's <laughs> very important. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so, and so this is, it's been three years before. Yeah. So, 
I'm not exactly sure what is on the agenda. I looked all around, Veronique. I could not find a copy of the agenda. Uh, I know you sent me a link. The link did not take me to an agenda. So I'm happy to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I know Veronique put something up there, but there are some things we need to talk about. So, you know, I, I'm not sure if you want me to direct that or if you want to ask questions or how we want to do this. I would say you direct it, but I'll just read you the agenda item just for your Great. benefit. Great. Uh, discussion of upcoming aggregation, negotiation, and appointment of delegate. delegate. Okay. So, so what's happening is that, yes, we're, we are approaching needing to go out to bid again. We, uh, about a year, about three years ago, we went out to bid and we ended up with two contracts, one a five month contract and then a three year contract. And we're now in the last year of the three year contract. And and yes, and it's continuing to save us a lot of money. Uh, and we're not going to do as well when we go out to bid again. The prices of electricity have gone up, and um, and and the market is crazy right now. Mostly crazy because of the war in Ukraine and what the Soviet Union is doing with what Russia is doing with energy and sort of uh, making life miserable for people who normally would be buying their their natural gas from this, from Russia and they're denying them so now though all of the countries in Europe are looking to other countries like the US to buy their natural gas and we're shipping a lot of natural gas to them and it raises our natural gas prices and uh and that raises our electricity price because most of our electric at least half of our electricity comes from natural gas anyway so the price of electricity has gone up fortunately we've just had a very warm winter and so it hasn't gone up as much as people feared. And uh, but but by having an ag by by having this aggregation and by having a three year contract, we've just ridden through this turmoil in the energy market uh, um, without paying those high prices. You know that that we buy our electricity from Dynagy and we pay our nine cents a kilowatt hour and say thank you very much. Uh, but but we will have to go out to bid again. We can't keep buying it at nine cents forever. And, uh, and, and no, so, so our broker colonial, uh, it wants to, to some extent as a practice, go out to bid and see and test the market just to see what prices are like right now. And, and we won't be, we don't expect we're going to get a price that we're going to like very much. And we don't have to take any of those bids, but we want to go through the exercise of going out to bid to make sure that both that, that, that all of the um, procedures are in place for approving a bid. If it came down to it, that we wanted to approve it. And so for example, you know, we're, we're 13 towns in our, aggregation and we want to make sure all 13 towns have um a, you know the, their select boards are comfortable with having somebody who's going to approve a bid when we get a bid that we like and the, the the problem is is that when we get a when we get a bid we have two hours to approve that bid from the time we open the bid price and so we can't we can't say oh uh you know so and so is on vacation and they won't be back until next week. You know, we have to make sure that that all the select boards of all the 13 towns have done the the work to make sure every town has got somebody who that board has approved to sign off for that town to say they accept the bid or they don't accept the bid. That makes sense? Yeah, actually. So 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 that's the exercise that we're going through right now. Um, they have gone out to bid for um, for what are called indicative pricing, and that means it's there's it's not a a price it's not a price that we could actually say we'll take it, but it will be a price that will be very close to uh, the it'll be the price right now, and and we're we're uh, so Colonial has they're going out to get indicative pricing. Um, 
uh, very soon. And but and, and no, in a April 10th, and then in April 24th, they're going to have what are, what's called executable pricing. And so we're all going to have to get together on April 24th, and we're going to have to decide, do we like that price or do we not like that price? And to some extent, we will ask, we will follow Colonial's lead. If they say they think it's an excellent price, we probably should take their word for it. Um, this is the time of year when prices are traditionally low. This is the time of year when three years ago we got incredibly low pricing, the pricing we're enjoying today. And so they want to go out just to see how the market's going to respond to our request to, to you know for prices. Bob, if we if we lock in at a price when we do um, get a final bid and everyone agrees on it, if the price goes down, which I don't anticipate that it will, do we are, are we still locked in even if it would be cheaper on the open market? We could go out to bid again. We're not no, we're not we're not locked into that price. We, um, we we could go out to bid again. Yeah. We didn't have to do that. We didn't do that before. The price has never been as low as the bids that we got before. So, uh, so, so, um, th then the other question that each select board is going to have to answer, and this is a little bit more confusing, is what flavors of power do you want to make available to the people in your town? One of the great things about aggregation is that is that you can make you can have multiple energy products. Um, for example, we could uh, one product is you know uh, the same energy that EverSource produces meet, uh, that's referred to as meeting the minimum requirements. The state has a lot of requirements for how much renewable energy the utility has to provide, and and that goes up every year. But so there's a there's the basic the, the the cheapest electricity is generally what it's referred to as meets minimum requirements, and then you could say or we have another product that's going to be meets minimum requirements plus we're going to purchase five percent more renewable energy class one renewable energy than meets minimum requirements or ten percent or twenty five percent or fifty percent or a hundred percent of the, of of your energy would be renewable, and then there's a couple different flavors of renewable. And and we went out to bid three years ago for about six or seven of these different flavors of of energy, and Conway chose three of them uh, that we make available to the people of Conway. We have uh, meets minimum requirements, twenty five percent additional renewable and 100% renewable and and almost everybody in Conway is on 25% additional renewable it's what they've chosen but you can but the great thing about the aggregation is you can switch back and forth from one product to another very easily there's no contract or you could switch back to the utility if you wanted to and pay um, you know, more than twice what we're paying now uh, uh, and so somebody in that two hour window is going to have to decide whether Conway wants to be part of the aggregation and then also what the three flavors are that we would want to make available to the people of Conway. And so that decision, to some extent, has to be thought about in advance. And we have to be, you know, in, unless the prices are wildly different than what we expect, you want to kind of know what you're what you're going to be how you're going to answer that those questions when we open the bids and and we have to know who's going to do it what happened 3 years ago was we opened the bids and a lot of selectmen were on the phone call and they said i don't know what the heck you guys are talking about and they really hadn't been well prepared by their energy committee that in general had been doing all of the work up until then and and we they had to make that decision in two hours, and some towns I think did not make good decisions. Uh, so that's so that's what we're here to talk about today. Is that we're about to go out for a bid again. We're gonna we're gonna get 
um, what's what's called indicative pricing, sample pricing on February on, on April 10th and on April 24th, we're going to get some real, we're going to get bids back that we're going to have to decide whether we want to take them or not. And who in Conway is going to make that decision? So who, what's, uh, what is our delegate structure and wh how are we going to be interacting as a town with this bid process? Um, normally it's somebody that represents the select board. So three years ago, that was me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, and I was on the select board and, and, uh, and, and sort of the key person of this whole thing. And, uh, and, and spend a lot of time talking with, uh, with, with Mark Capadona, your favorite person at Colonial. And, and, uh, uh, but, but now I'm not on the select board. So you could you could you could grant me that you could make me the delegate. Um, what some towns have done is they've said anybody on the select board or their admin or maybe plus somebody else could all make the decision. Whoever is available, you just want to make sure that on April twenty fourth, when we have a two hour window, when we have to make a decision, that whoever, if that person who you who said is going to make the decision, and that means you know. Uh, you know, they have sign off authorization. If that person isn't available, then it's a problem. Well, I, I you know, this, I think you've done such a good job with this over the years already. If you're willing to do it again, um, then the town would, uh, it would be really fortunate that if that's the case. Um, that, I am willing to do it again. And clearly, you know, it's, it's important to me. Uh, well, Wonderful. So I, I move to nominate Bob Armstrong as the delegate on behalf of the town of Conway and the select board of the town of Conway for the upcoming aggregation negotiation. Second. Do uh, you want a backup, Bob? What's that? Did you want a backup person? Uh, you, you know, do you want to have Veronique be a backup person or one of you guys? You know, it's all going <laughs> with me. I think it is good to have a backup person. Yeah. I believe Barry was the name. All right, all right. And, and, well, we still, we didn't actually, we didn't, we didn't actually vote. So we have a motion and a second. So we, so okay, uh, good, good idea. And so that uh, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 So it's unanimous that Bob is the delegate, and then for an alternate, I'll nominate Veronique. <laughs> uh, me to open my mouth. Yeah, you did open your mouth on that one. So um, I'll second that nomination. All right. So uh, all in favor of Veronique as the alternate? Unless Erica, did you want to be the alternate? I, I, I I'm 95 percent sure I'm not going to be available on April 24th. So okay. should not be me. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion and a second for second. Veronique. All in favor of Veronique as the alternate? Aye. Aye. Uh, I it's unanimous. Okay. I so, do have a question for Bob. Are we beholden to the other nouns uh, on the vote, or is it uh, if we vote for a particular um, package, we're good? Conway can do it without the other towns. Um, uh, we, we will go out to bid for the base electricity price. And then for all of these sort of options, you know, how much green how, and each one will have their own price. And every town can choose the set of three options that they want to make available to their town. And okay, that's so the total independent for that. Got it. Okay. Where, where there is interplay is if, you know, we have 13 towns. And then maybe the town of, uh, you know, whatever, Deerfield or some town decides they think they they don't want to do it. You know, they don't like this price. And they that means that they would be going out on their own and having to find their own, go out to bid separately without us. And that may impact the price for everyone else. In other words, in other words, the, the, the price is based upon the, the electricity load of all 13 towns. And 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 if one town dropped out, we would have to go then back to the the provider of the, whoever that bid was from and say, would you meet this same price without this town? 
You, you, does that make sense? It does. So there is there is a relationship. We're not completely independent, but but as to which products we make available to the people of Conway, we are completely independent. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Bob, I have one one question. Um, just sure. in terms of net metering, that does this doesn't affect net metering or anything else. No, 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 it has nothing to do with net metering. When when you do net metering, this is I assume you mean solar, yeah. Eversource pays you at their rate, it has nothing to do with the with the rate that we're that you're pay, you're buying your electricity from. Yeah. Okay. Then, then you know, in, in, if you're in the aggregation, you're buying your electricity from the aggregation at a price that's you know hopefully lower than Eversource, but they pay you at their rate, not, not at our price. Thank you. So, and I guess in a related item, we are dissolving the Energy Committee tonight, and we're replacing it with a Sustainability Committee, which is much more 21st century, don't you think? Yes, it is. Yeah. I, I mean, and it sounds like Veronique is doing a good job recruiting some new people that might that 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 also are like the idea of a sustainability committee. Yeah, if they're on our mission. Now. Yeah, if they're an actual living human being, then we're like better. Then we're way ahead of where the previous energy committee left us, which is with no actual human beings on it. So no, no, there's one person still on the energy committee, and hopefully really? that person will will be part of the sustainability committee. Good. I I don't know of anybody who's actually still on the energy committee. Who? So, yeah. tell, who is that person then? Peter Martin. He's not on the energy committee. No, but he said he was he was willing to continue if the energy committee revived. And I've I've got an email into him about oh, good. the sustainability. Hopefully, Great. join that. I don't Great. Know. Great. Sorry, to, sorry to call no, you out there, Peter. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, sorry. All right. Great. Well, thank so, you. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Okay. See ya. Yep. All right. Next, Jan Amin. Discussion and vote on the creation of special municipal employee status or designation for the representative and the alternate to the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Um, so this is one of those things, Erica, um, and Chris, where um, in the abstract, out of context, as an intellectual exercise, if you were considering whether special meeting, special municipal employee status is a good thing or a bad thing, you would say it's a bad thing. Because the ethics rules that we have as a state, the ethics laws, those are good things um, in terms of keeping municipal employee misconduct at a minimum. But when you create a special municipal employee, you are waiving many of those ethical laws as applied to that position, um, including many of the ethical laws pertaining to bribery, self-dealing, financial misconduct, all kinds of things like that. Um, however, um, um, Jan Amin wants us to do this. Please, please. No. And so, like, to me, that's kind of, what, that's really where the analysis should, analysis should no, stop. Well, you no. shouldn't you shouldn't do it just because I'm begging. Um, that's although a good I reason. Would, although that's, I appreciate that's it. An actual, that's an actual good reason. Yeah. Well, so so here's, in, in the short amount of time we have, here here's how we got here. Um, the solid waste, we had a, we had a board member a year ago who wanted to, is a private citizen, um, was on their, his town's planning commission and wanted to set up a cleanup day. This was in the town of Colerain, wanted a townwide cleanup. And he went to the select board and said, you know, will you guys fund this or can we get some donations? And I want to do a tire cleanup and a, basically like a green up day. And, uh, after a couple of meetings, they said, well, you're, you're on the, the solid, he was actually the chair. You're the chair of the solid waste district. You have a conflict of interest. You can't represent any personal um, projects before us because you're an employee of the solid waste district. So 
it's very convoluted and I'm sure Phil understands it way more than I do. Um, my understanding is we're not really waiving, you know, financial, you can't have financial irregularities. You can't take make, it doesn't give you the ability to take more gift money or, you know, wheel and deal. The, the goal of this is really so that my board members can hold multiple municipal positions. Um, and they can go before their select board as a private citizen and represent their, uh, you know, personal interests without a conflict. My understanding is even if the all of the, the board members and alternates of special municipal employees, they will still have to identify their conflicts. So um, if somebody is on a planning commission or on a concom, they will still have to submit a letter to the state ethics commission saying that they have an inherent conflict. It just allows them to hold those two positions. That's my understanding. The reason I'm here begging is because the ethics commission has a determination letter out. And I had sent that in, in uh, one of the follow-up emails that requires for regional boards, it requires every single member community to vote affirmative any of the other board members to be special municipal employees. So we have 21 towns. We're down to three, uh, Warwick, Heath, and Conway. Um, and this, this vote goes with the position, not with the person. So right now your representative is Lynn Rubenstein. She's a retired solid waste person, professional actually. And um, she is a private citizen. So she would probably most likely have no conflict of interest um, and probably doesn't need this designation. Uh, but I can tell you that many of my board members do um, need this designation to, to allow them to hold multiple positions in town. So that's the very short piece. And I so appreciate Phil putting it on the agenda and being, being willing to host me tonight. Uh, um, and I appreciate your good Good, 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 good humor in having been tortured by me on this topic. So, um, and we're, you know, I, but basically there's like sort of, uh, there, there, there's like looking at something academically or, or like in a, in a, uh, like out of context with the real world and like looking at it and saying, that's ah, not, that, that, that's a bad idea. And then there's, being part of an organization that needs that needs Conway to save it. <laughs> and Thank you. Yes. And and that's what that's what Conway does. We save the world, or at least our little corner of it. So, um, so let's. <laughs> it's true. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to make a motion that we uh, um, that we designate. Our, well, do you want the two? You got the two motions in front of you, right? Yeah, I, I, yes, yes, probably the bottom. So, two motions. I move that the select board designate the position of Franklin County Solid Waste Management District representative as a special municipal employee position for the town and that the same motion for the alternate representative as a special municipal employee position for the town and both of those are pursuant to Massachusetts general law chapter 268a section 1n as in Nancy <clears throat> is there a second I'll second that in, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So I keep reading through this because there's a couple things on there. I was like, oh, yeah, it, it's okay, but it's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's okay. Yeah. I'll keep everybody in line. Don't worry. Yeah. So it's a it, motions have passed, and we are a special municipal employee town. Thank you, folks, so much. I really Thanks. appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck with the rest of your meeting. Thanks, Dan. Happy Thanks, spring. Dan. Happy spring. Bye-bye. Yeah, really.
Well, that's good. With a smile and your knees. Would you want to do the select board questions for the team or town administrator? Um, well, let's just we have we do have a request from the town administrator. It says a town. It's that, that's, I'm just reading from the agenda. I know that's town funny. administrator request <laughs> to dissolve the energy committee and create a sustainability committee. And uh, we need to. Do you want to? I'm, I'm happy to explain why if people are wondering what you know. Uh, so, as as we just heard earlier, the energy committee has had no membership for a while. Um, did amazing, amazing work. Um, but some of it, I think, still needs to carry on there. One of the things that the Energy Committee did, aside from doing so much work on solar, was also to um, help with the data for the green communities. We became a green community in, I think, it was before 2018, when the work was done here on the town hall and everything. Um, but none of the data had been kept up since 2018. So I'm, I'm working on that right now with the city. I hope to get back. So there's those grants to work on. Um, there's also the MVP grants to work on. There's a lot of things that just come under, in my mind, sustainability umbrella. So energy is one of those things. And to me, it just made sense to, to go for the bigger umbrella. And, you know, hopefully anybody who is interested in energy would join that to be part of the sustainability committee. And, but it could encompass more than just energy. So hopefully that'll attract a broader audience. Mm -hmm. That was my reason. <laughs> Well, you can only float it and see what happens. I mean, as you say, energy is not sexy. People aren't signing up for it. I my my bigger concern, and then it's not my meeting. Be speaking, John Crane, it's three twenty Main Poland Road. <laughs> <laughs> um, that it's it without some guardrails around it, it could snowball because it's 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 just you know sustainability is such a broad bucket. Uh, it, it, it really needs to be sort of mm -hmm. well defined as to what falls under sustainability and what's outside the work. Yeah. That's true. I, so, I mean, I'm happy to to write up a mission statement and run it by the select board. Um, on, in all honesty, most of what I was hoping for is that people would be interested in helping me pursue grants that would help Conway be more sustainable. That's really what I'm looking at as the mission. Um, yeah. I know the previous energy committee that that what ended what they ended up doing a lot of with the solar like spending a lot of energy on the creation of solar overlay districts uh, in the zoning bylaws and everything and that was just a lot of work mm -hmm. um, and it ended up being all that work we ended up. <clears throat> We ended up uh, just last year, I think we took those, took one of the big overlay off because it was one uh, behind the grammar school and we, we dissolved that, whatever. We, it was basically a lot of what they did. We decided a couple of years later as a town that we didn't want that done anymore um, for a bunch of different reasons. But uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think it's a good idea and Let's hope that hopefully we can get it going again. I mean, I do have several people that I've I've approached and who have already said that they're interested. So, including one semi-retired professional, environmental professional, but it would be amazing. Good, good. Um, so the we the finance committee does not have a form, but we were. I'm sorry, did you what? Were you going to vote on that, or do you want me to come back? To you? Is there a motion that's necessary? Well, I guess, yeah. yeah okay, let's make a, a committee. Yeah, yeah. Let's make a motion to dissolve the energy committee, um, which is and and create a sustainability committee in its place. 
Uh, did you rename the Energy Committee? Yeah, I, I think that kind of is, but you know. Well, we do need to dissolve the Energy Committee in order to create a sustainability committee, or can you simply take the existing? Well, I think it's kind of the same thing. The, the end is the same way. But yeah. The, the, you know, Discussion. Whichever way you want to do it, it doesn't. Well, dissolving the energy committee means, you know, I mean, you may not have anybody on the committee at this time, but if there were people on the committee, you would obviously have to remove them from the Right. We have nobody on the committee. And then you would reappoint. reappoint. Right. We don't have anybody. That's why it's. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second. Yeah. You. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. To take to take a look. Not we weren't going to go through everything in the budget, but we were just going to talk about the little ones. Think about that for next week. <laughs> and and the you know, grant the final budget next week is going to be added to it. And I'm happy to show, I mean, this, if you need to do a quick explanation of it too, just to show people the new numbers to look at, because it's not necessarily new, but it's a new year. 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 It's So what I'm showing here is this is what I take in the article. Um, so the first up to column B um, will be on item two. And then these columns here I just put in here to show to make a two two and a half three percent closure. Lines that are like blue are the ones that are actually affected by a polar. Some of them will not necessarily be exactly 2% above because I've taken out the stipends that are, you know, dealt with the fact. So just to give you that. And if you scroll all the way down here. So here's the number for the total for the general finance here so far. With the 2% total, it's this number, two and a half that, three that. This is just the difference, just to let you know how much that's. Plus, here are the benefits that also get increased. This is from Jane Warner's comments. So that's how much they would be. So this is the total. Oh, goodness. Somehow, this is not the one I want. I had a whole thing at the bottom here. Let me send it to you. So, at the bottom, I had um, this continued, which is um, so. So, I add all these up and I have so then this 4.27% is our overall budget increase this year, which including schools because so far the schools have been. So I will when, when we get this next spreadsheet over on this side of our half percentages, I think it went as high as 4.7 or 3 percent. No, I guess that's a <laughs> I redid it when I just sent it to the software. Anyway, um, the main thing I wanted you to understand. Oh, if you have any questions, just the, the, just the one thing that, um, that we're doing with um, the proposal is for one size fits all polo. This is the normal. Um, we 
we don't do anything with all of the things that come here. School district, the administration, and staff for nine years or tonight. But we still come home. We'll say that that's not the most popular amongst employees um, from the feedback that we get every year. But the problem is that the larger salary numbers, that those are typically attracted to the increase two and a half percent from the 60 year plus one year substantial. So we, we don't, <clears throat> we're not stuck in one. Amazing when you say whatever the dividing line is, it's amazing how many people might be able to say and point out how close they are to that dividing line. Fairly, it's not a positive. So, what can you call it as sort of a union volunteer perspective? So, for instance, the year of the pandemic. That year, there was yeah, uh, yeah. everybody coming. Yeah, it was like yeah. Um, and then I think there was a two and a half, and then the next year they did a the next year they did a two and a half retroactive two and a half, and then the <clears> last <throat> year they did three percent. So you know, it's, it's a little, yeah. And that's the other thing is that um, historically we've been there, there are years when we put the four or five years where there was zero inflation, there was zero total in for social security money. And we just looked at this one time, but we were still, we still were doing two and a half, three percent of the year. But we hope some of our long-term employees have a memory at least that you know we try to we try to be No, I just wanted to show the spreadsheet just to keep on the first and look at it. But the other thing is that everybody is top. I guess <clears throat> there's no people who don't have any vote. Select board needs to discuss questions for police chief candidate. Um, I don't know if you got to see the questions that the steering committee or the, the initial committee put together. Yeah, I thought it was pretty thorough. I didn't really have, I mean, all the questions that I was going to ask were already on that list. So I'm I'm happy just to have Don come in and just kind of have an informal, you know, chat with him. I am too. I, I could, I do have a few questions I could add, but I don't think it needs to be formalized. Like Eric's, Eric's statement. So I don't want to be derivative. So he's prepared for next Monday. So great. <clears throat> 
All right, um, that's I'm fine with informal. Um, and we'll go from there. And that's and then we're also going to have to decide, you know, there, there's a contract negotiation process with him as well. Well, with the if we decide to offer the position, so uh, that has to be done in open record and open meeting. The we, negotiation. We can. So, uh, mine was the, not done. The select, no, um, there's a, it, it, the contract uh, negotiation. At least mine was not done in open. But I can certainly provide a yeah, few samples. And you know. we might be able to negotiate in private in, in the executive session. But I know the result has to come. You have to do that publicly. What the what the amounts are, everything has to be mm -hmm. done publicly. So. Probably a hybrid. Uh, we can add that to the executive session. Yeah, there you go. But just keeping in mind that there is a benefit to the town in making the hiring decision sooner rather than later, while there still is a budget process to learn from mm -hmm. and a mentor to teach. Um, and then rescheduling the April 17th select board meeting. Uh, didn't both Chris and Erica say last time you won't be here on April 17th? Wasn't that, or did I get the wrong date? Was it the 24th? Uh, I will be away the 17th. I'm I'm going to be away the 24th as well, but I should be able to join remote, remotely on the 24th. Maybe I misheard. I thought there was no. I told you the same thing, but I, I, I won't be here. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. I will definitely be here. Yes, the seventeenth. Yes. All right. Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, the items not anticipated. Forty-eight hours. We're, no, we we could have, but we're going to put those till next. We're going to just put those till next week. Um, the town administrator update. <laughs> you want to talk about G Z T Z A. Yeah. I, I mean, sure, the, the main thing, other than our, our snowstorm and dealing with everything that came about because of that, um, a bunch of webinars that I attended, but um, the main thing is the Municipal Vulnerability Program grant. The RFR came out, or, sorry, not, it didn't come out, but the, the webinar explaining it came out the day of, after the snowstorm, and, you know, I had nothing. Um, you just got to email. Oh, I did? Oh, definitely. Okay, thank you. Oh, let me rephrase it. I could have done. <laughs> anyway, so um, so I wasn't able to go. I, I will catch up on that. But the main thing is that I did put together the application from the town to the Community Preservation Commission. Um, <laughs> thanks. Um, and we're going to ask for $45,000 for a grant match, um, hoping that the two-year uh, grant will be $450,000. And we spent a fair bit of time talking about what kinds of things we should do with in terms of community education, which is going to be a huge part of the, um, of the program. So anyway, that was pretty much it. I'm going to, I'll watch that. I haven't had a chance to watch the RFR webinar soon, and I'm pretty sure they said that the webinar was going to come out again. Um, I'm sorry, the RFR was going to come out again uh, or come out very soon, so I'm expecting that in the next week or two. And the thing is, once that comes out, I can't talk to the MVP rep anymore, so um, hopefully I'll get that all together tomorrow. Anyway, that was about it. Um, and I will be out of the office this Friday because I'm going to go to the legislative MMA legislative breakfast in Westwood.
just like board member comments, concerns. Uh, mail, we did have a couple of things. First of all, the town did receive a check for a thousand dollars for the cemetery at Cricket Hill. Oh dear, the name of the. Oh, I don't know. If Jan has it, yeah. I'm so sorry that I missed that, that I forgot the name. Um, but it was a generous gift, and we'll publicize the name and we can remember that information. Um, <laughs> and then we do have, we did get from National Grid the vegetation management plan. Well, that's what they call it. What I call it is the permission to, or the notification that they will be spraying Roundup plan. Um, because that is what people really, that, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the take home lesson from all that. And that's again, that when the, na the national grid, uh, uh, transmission line is the one that is parallel to the Deerfield River from the Bardwell's Ferry Bridge down to the South River. Um, and they basically, the town does not have the legal ability to regulate uh, their conduct with respect to how they maintain their transmission line. And they they have a bunch of different things that they do, including manually rip them out, and rip undergrowth out. They they have a helicopter with a saw, a circular saw, flying decapitating tree kind of a thing that they go and um, and then they they have crews that spray. And so what does he say here? That the notification is separate from any notification you receive for herbicide maintenance. Yeah, we don't receive them, that we don't have to, they don't have to notify us when they're doing when that. They're spraying. Yeah. Um, if if they did have, you know, I, presumably there are some things that they don't have to notice, but when it's a transmission line, the transmission lines are the ones that the town has no ability to regulate when they do that, because that's a whole that's infrastructure. Can't touch that stuff. Um, and yeah, so uh, the for the, for most people, the National Grid one is less of a concern than the EverSource one because the EverSource transmission line actually goes along roads and it goes past people's homes and everything. This one basically is just along the river, and there's no trucks that are spraying that are going past people's driveways like the EverSource. But that's, and then the next meeting is March 27th at 6 p.m. And we'll do the finance committee at 6.30 again. Um, yeah. Presumably. <laughs> sure. Presumably. And uh, with that, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous, we can adjourn.